Well, that's not good. Hey everyone, how's it going? So this is technically a continuation of a live stream I did on the Mining Misfits Discord about two weekends ago. I wanted to repaste this uh, Vega 56 because it was running a little warm. So I felt like doing a 20 minute live stream and pulled it apart, repasted it, put it back together and the temperatures were going even higher. So I'm like, what the heck? And everyone who's watching the live stream is like, it should have went down because old pace was old. It wasn't really bad per se, but it was time to get changed. So I threw some cryo knot onto it and it's running hotter. So I pull it back off the rig again during the live stream and I go to pull the heat sink and the vapor chamber out. And lo and behold, the fin stack literally disconnects from the vapor chamber. Uh, full disclosure, no, the vapor chamber did not look like this. I'm getting to that part. It was still flat the way it was supposed to be. Um, but regardless, there was a bunch of little, I guess, solder or however they attached this fin stack to the vapor chamber and it all gave way. And that's why it was running so hot because you couldn't get the heat from the vapor chamber to the fin stack because the fin stack was delaminating, for lack of a better word, from the vapor chamber. So there was no easy way to really reattach this back to the vapor chamber. So I took a like 300 grit sandpaper, sanded off all the old solder or whatever the heck it was on it on both the vapor chamber and here. And then I took a bunch of um, solder paste and put it on the vapor chamber, put this together and put it in my reflow oven, fully expecting it to do something like this because there's nothing else I could really do. There's no other way to really attach it. I figured let's give it a shot on the live stream and see what happens, but chances are it's gonna balloon because of the pressure buildup from the heat inside the reflow oven. And lo and behold, that's exactly what it did right around about 180 degrees C. It didn't even get hot enough to really reflow the solder and nice little pinhole formed right here and went pssst all over the place so yeah i knew that was over it's not that big of a deal life continues so since we can't use this vapor chamber and cooling system anymore and you can't really find these on ebay just this unit you have to buy a whole dead card for like 70 80 100 dollars on an auction and hopefully you get it for 100 bucks for a dead card and then you can reuse it there's a better way to do this now, these haven't been popular for a few years since the Vega 56 and 64s came out, but I ended up getting a hold of a Ragentech. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, but uh, Morpheus 2 VGA cooler. They made this for a couple different variations, such as the regular Morpheus 2, then the Core 2, and the Morpheus Vega, which is what this one is. It's for the Vega series. I think it shows elsewhere a little bit more information right there, but we're messing with the Vega. They're basically the exact same thing. The only difference is, is the uh, accessories that come on with it, because since this has HBM2 memory, you don't have to cool the memory. It's part of the core, basically, but you got all the VRMs and you'll see that as soon as I pull off this type of, this piece of metal backing right here, and you'll see a bunch of thermal pads that are meant to transfer heat from the VRMs to this plate, which in turn gets passively cooled through the blower fan. So today we're gonna to install this. And since this is just the cooler, it doesn't come with fans. I also got two Noctua NF A12 by 15 millimeters, not the regular size 25s. I got the 15s, which are a little narrower. So this way it doesn't turn into like a quad slot card. I mean, it's probably gonna be at least a triple by the time we're done with this, but it's not that big of a deal because it's going on a mining rig, which has plenty of space. And also we got a little cable that goes from the mini four pin connector on the GPU for the fans and breaks it out to the regular four pin connectors for the regular fans. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's get this black piece off of here first. So I just got this iFixit kit because I was sick and tired of going through cheap Harbor Freight precision uh, screwdrivers. So I want something half decent. The sad thing is every time I open this, 
all I can hear in the back of my head is Jay's Two Cents saying, I fix it, I fix it. Thanks, Jay's Two Cents. You've completely screwed up. I fix it for me. So I hear your voice every time I open this. So shout out to Jay's Two Cents. Thanks a lot, bro. <laughs> That's this side. Now we gotta take off the screws that actually hold that metal base plate on. There we go. And we can see here, uh, nothing going over here because this is where the blower motor was, but here's all your VRMs and you can see some of the pads have transferred on over. And so that's everything that we need to cool in the aftermarket. So let me get some room here shove this on over here it's just on over here now let's open up this box instruction manual and this is a bunch of um, thermal double-sided tape or whatever it is so let's put that over there and this is probably what changes with each kit is all these little heat sinks that we're going to end up using for the VRMs so then you got fan mount brackets and the main bracket is mounted to it. Um, this has a VRM heat sink, or at least that's supposed to run down this section, supposedly. Uh, and the back plate, I want to see if I can try to reuse the original one. This way I can keep using the back, the um, actual metal back plate that it came with. But we'll play with that as time goes on. Open this one up. And here's the cooler itself, supposedly rated for like 300 watts. And yeah, that is a nice machine surface. So let's go ahead and see if we can get all those little heat sinks on there. That's going to take a little bit to get done right. The instructions are okay. They're not that good, but eh. Of course, they're showing you assembly for... 54 by 54 millimeter AMD Hawaii chipset. Wow, that's really old. But <laughs> at least it gives you a general idea of how you want to do with the heat sinks before you put the main one on. And then add on the fans afterwards. So after reading the instructions somewhat, I'm not going to be able to reuse the back plate. Oh well, no big deal. But at least I have an extra blower motor that's still perfectly good uh, if one goes bad on one of my other cards. So... I got all the heat sinks mounted up in this configuration because that's the way they'll fit. I have to use low profiles over here, otherwise it'll hit the aftermarket cooler. But it covers everything that was originally heat sink before. So I get this out of the way now. Okay, so that is the correct placement for AMD Vega, which is all the way out on all four of these little standoffs. Now I need to go and fix some of these heat sinks because we were having issues with them hitting. So let me do a quick little rearrangement here before we go to final assembly. Okay, a few more discoveries. Um, for this to work correctly, you can't really fit any of their heat sinks on these top chokes, which honestly shouldn't be too big of a deal because we're mining with the card and we're actually under vaulting so it really shouldn't get too hot. These ones are the important ones. Those are the actual MOSFETs, and that is what really needs to be cooled. So we may be able to get away with not cooling these inductors right here. These ones fit. I'm going to leave them on. Might as well. Um, the other thing is we need to take these standoffs back off, and they came with four of these little... Let's see if you can even see it. I didn't even get it. <sighs> Four of these little nylon washers. I don't even, even know if you can see that. But yeah, four nylon washers. We need to put them in here and space this out just a little bit more. So let's do that. Okay, let's give these surfaces a final cleaning and then we're ready for final assembly. And they give you four of these little spring screws to attach it. But of course, before you do that, it would help if you use their back plate and it does have this nice rubber onto it. Some people were afraid 
about putting this right on here because you're just re resting on a ton of capacitors. But as long as it has a nice rubber base, I'm okay with that because it's not electrically conductive then. And you can see here the clearances for the heat sinks over here. Clearances for the heat sinks over here. The only reason I couldn't have those chokes is because of these little two spots where they mount up top here and it mess that bracket messes with the uh, inductors underneath there. At least you can definitely see the, um, in the inductors, the uh, MOSFETs are easily cooled. So let's continue onward and get some fans on this. Okay, so they blow down that way. Okay, so now we need their fan brackets that they included. Uh, four 120, 25 millimeter fans. And this is for 120, 13. Well, I got 15s, but these are the brackets I'm going to end up using. So let me read the instructions to figure out exactly how these brackets go on now. I am not liking their mounting brackets on this, so this might turn out to be a zip tie job. Give me a second. Okay, so here's the finished product. Not exactly pretty, but it's amazing what you can do with zip ties, as long as these zip ties hold up to the heat. I'm not so sure about that, because they are nylon. But both fans spin, they're plugged into the adapter, the extra wires just shoved down here for the time being, because I ran out of zip ties. So they shouldn't block the airflow that much, we'll give it a shot. But here is the whole card, and yeah, that's definitely a triple slot, if not just a little bit more, if you look that's a double a triple it's like a three and a half slot so yeah if i got the full size fans it would definitely be a quadruple slot fan so good thing this is going into a mining rig and not a gaming pc otherwise it would be kind of interesting uh so let's plug it into the mining rig and see what it does so there she is installed in the rig definitely much bigger and not as pretty as the other cards but the question is Will it turn on and will it hash? Give me a second. I got to reach into the back here. Hit the button. That turns everything on. And we have fans spinning. Cool. We have fans spinning. We have lights on the riser. Let's give it a few minutes to start up and we'll go back to the computer and uh, see if it works. Okay, so I let the miner run for 15, 16 minutes now, just so everything stabilizes. And we can see everything's hashing great. The card we're looking at is GPU-3. And the way we can tell is the fans only spin at 1300 RPM, so they show up as 25%. But it's running perfectly wattage, perfectly everywhere else. And actually, the temperatures are really freaking good. So... It's a bit of a monstrosity of a looking card, but let's go look at it real quick now that it's been running for 15 minutes. And she's happy. Yeah, I can feel the heat coming off of the fins on this. The fans are spinning nice. It's probably one of the quietest cards because the fans are only spinning at 1300 RPM, but it's working perfectly fine. So again, granted, it's a bit of a Frankenstein card now, but it's doing work again. So then that's what counts. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. If you have any questions, come join us over at the Mining Misfit Discord, and I will see you on the next video.